Welcome to Sasquatch Island. My name is Tom Seawit. Starting to do video casts so I can cover a little bit more information and share it with all of you viewers and listeners. I bought a TV so it helps me with the laptop to show you pictures of what I'm talking about. So today what I'm going to be talking about is Bookwuss is not our tribe Sasquatch. So a lot of the books that are out there that I've read they always refer to my tribe, the Kwakwakiwak, from northeastern Vancouver Island. I look at it that all of the tribes in North America, we Kwakwakiwak, have a really big connection to our animal kingdom as well as the Sasquatch, which we call Chunakwa. And this is a, one of my designs of a Chunakwa, a male one with kids in its sack. But a lot of people make the mistake and they say that the Quag Udal Indians, that's how they mispronounce our name, refer to their Sasquatch as Bukwus. That's not the case. If we look at the creatures that are throughout the world, you know, we know we have Sasquatch here, that's in North America, as well as Skunk Ape and Windigo in the East. Australia has the Yowie, China has the Yaren, and of course the Himalayas, Asia, they have Yeti. But we hear from Indonesia area about this thing called the Hobbit which they termed Homo florensis and it's a small bipedal creature that some of the people that see it according to reports nowadays it's covered in hair as well so all I'm saying is maybe when the Sasquatch migrated over the Bering Land Bridge Homo florensis possibly came too and that's why the North American Indians when they speak of stick Indians or the little people or in my tribe the Bukwus maybe that's what they're referring to and that's why I want to correct it so there's no mistake so basically the Kwakwakiwak speak of two different bipedal creatures we share our homelands with one being the Bukwus the little one covered in hair the big one being the Chonakwa our Sasquatch so when you go to the potlatch ceremony that our tribes have, the chiefs will host them and all their family helps out, they share with everyone their treasure, which is their crests and their legends and stories, and they come to life and dance and song. And this creature here, the Bukwus, pretty much every potlatch you go to, a family will bring out their story about what an ancestor saw when it refers to the Bukwus. And the cost, uh, regalia is usually greenish and it has hemlock boughs on it like we see in the picture and a beautiful carved mask and each family of course their artists do it differently but most of them have a grimacing face like the teeth are showing. This is a native artist from our tribe that painted this quite a few years ago and he's no longer with us and but he brought to the world his amazing art and he's well known for the Bukwus paintings that he did that were made into prints and this is one of his most famous ones and you can see that the Bukwus has something in its shell and you see the squirts on the beach at low tide at night because the moon's out well that thing in its hand is what we call cockles jolly and even the Sasquatch which I have in one of my designs here the Chonakwa they're said to come to the beach for their favorite food like Bukwus for the cockle or what we call jolly and if you go to the beaches of the Pacific Northwest this is what you'll see these shells called cockle shells and when you dig in the sands you'll find these shellfish that are a delicacy to many people native and non-native to this day you steam them for around half an hour and when you open them up the meat inside looks like a shrimp or a prawn tail and they're really really tasty Here's another design that he did of a Bukwus harvesting cockles on the beach. Here's a Bukwus mass that's in our, one of our museums on Vancouver Island, I think this one is, or in uh, Vancouver. But anyway, you see that teeth, that grimacing. Bukwus is said to do that, so is all primates. When we hear about monkeys, orangutans, gorillas, they do that. But what is this creature? I think it's a, probably a ancestor or of Homo florensis and this woman by the name of Jill Smith I don't know her July 2013 posted this picture recently and we see that little 
face inside the bushes and it's blowing up here you can see an eye there another eye the nose the mouth and it's looking through the bushes these are the reports that we get about these little bipedal creatures they're said to scurry around in the bushes really quick they'll look at you a lot of the native people we don't even some tribes don't even speak about it others just say that it's not good to see it we quack walk you walk you know when we talk of it in our legends the book was is said to be from the spiritual realm and it has a skeletal type face with sunken cheeks grimacing teeth it's greenish in color and that's why our regalia is greenish when we dance the book was but if you think about it you know when you look at the videos and pictures of sloths in south america slow moving primate you can see the algae growing in their hair we're in a rainforest here in the pacific northwest and maybe that's why the quack walk have that greenish colors and tones and regalia i don't know i'm just saying that you know something to think about this is a recent one and this is what got me to do this uh video cast it was up on the social media the other day and if you look at that little bipedal creature two arms two legs it looks like it's hair covered it's got that from the knee up flares like uh they say that these book was looks like but if you look at the size compared to the trees the grass and everything that thing's small and i don't think it's a juvenile sasquatch i think it's one of the little ones here's a picture i found that intrigued me and some of the native tribes talk about them being just little humans but this photo whether or not it's you know a, the real deal or not i don't know but you can see it has like a braid in its hair almost looks like a headband possibly or that's its hair but it has the chiseled features of a plains indigenous person a north american indian and i just found it really intriguing because when you hear of some of the indian tribes referring to them as the stick people and there's so many stories even when i was up in the northwest territories they used to speak of the little one up there and the big one they called Naga, their Sasquatch. Here's a footprint picture I pulled off the internet. It shows the size. And I've heard in the Pacific Northwest that the tracks look like this. Narrow heel flares up to where the toes are. And they're small. They're only that big. So something to think about. This is another one that apparently was found in a nest of a raptor. Once again, I don't know if it's true or not, but... It sure intrigued me when I saw it. I looked at it and I thought, hmm, I wonder if that was a juvenile bakus. I don't know, but I just thought I'd share it with you. Here's the bakus being danced in its regalia. You can see the green colors. It looks like a ghillie seat, suit they use for the regalia. Here's another one from an artist on Vancouver Island. And you see the greenish color. And he's reaching down to grab a uh, cockle. And... You know, that's what our tribe talks about. So when you're out there investigating and you go to the beach, maybe you'll see one. I've heard a lot of reports from the Vancouver Island area about the small bipedal hair-covered creatures being seen on the beaches. We often read about it in some of the books. It's getting more and more out there, I've realized in the last few years. But I just thought I'd share that with you. Sasquatch Island, that's what it's all about, just educating please go to our tribe's website. It's called Umitsta Cultural Center in Alert Bay. Now it's www.umitsta.ca. Go to the umitsta.ca's website. Go up and uh, start hitting the uh, windows and clicking, but you'll find one called the Potlatch Collection. Go there. And then you go into the other banner that says education. And when it comes through the education page, scroll down and you'll see videos. And you will see a video of the Bakwas. And they spell it B-A-K-W-A-S. Go click that, turn up the volume, and watch the Bakwas dancer, that picture I showed you earlier. So who knows? I'd like to see a Bakwas, but at a distance. I've danced it in regalia and potlatch with my family quite a few years ago 
and that's me there on the beach. We're doing some filming for a television documentary, and you know it was at sunrise early in the morning. We went down there, and that's where the picture came from. But you never know when you go to the beach looking for shellfish. Look around, maybe you'll see one. I thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to join Sasquatch Island, my Facebook group, as well as on YouTube, my channel, Sasquatch Island. Hit that bell icon so you're reminded, notified when I post a new video like this one. And don't forget to slap that subscribe button so I can get more members and share it with other people so that they can go and watch the numerous videos I have. I know you're going to enjoy it. And for you that like podcasts, Monster X Radio, go to their site. It's a subscription service for nine bucks, I think, for three months. But you get four podcasts for the price of one from Monster X Radio. And my podcast is Sasquatch Island. So there you go. I thank you very much for watching. And in the language of my people, Halakulisla, go in peace.